Hello and welcome to Tales and Trails. I'm Minnie Menon. They are the temples of the earth, exquisitely carved, breathtakingly beautiful, and they also chronicle history. We travel to Bishtupur, to the famous terracotta temples out there, to find out all the stories they hide. These temples have made the sleepy town of Bishnupur famous across the world. Exquisitely carved and unlike any temple you would have seen outside the region, the famous terracotta temples of Bishnupur are all that remain of an interesting period of the region's history. Like elsewhere, geography played an important role in Bishnupur's history and emergence as a powerful capital under the Malla rulers starting the 10th century CE. On the edge of the Chota Nagpur Plateau, bordering the thick forests and tribal areas of Purulia and Singbum, this Malla kingdom with Bishnupur as its capital was critical. Probably of tribal origin themselves, the Mallas grew into real prominence in the 16th and 17th century. So the Mallas started probably around the, the 10th, 11th century. So you can see the story of Adi Malla, uh, who which, which like is the first Malla king. Um, I don't know, I mean, we don't know if he is an actual historical figure, uh, but around 9th, 10th century onwards, you can see temple building going on, some sort of, some sort of uh, authority, because for temple building, you need a higher authority to build the temples, to give uh, uh, provisions for the temples and stuff. So I think it, it, it comes from the 9th, 10th centuries, and then Sultan, Bengal Sultanate period, uh, where from, uh, they, they subordinate themselves as the, uh, to the um, sultans of, uh, of Mapandua and, and Gaur. The, the deal is that you, you become a subordinate, you pay a tax, and your kingdom is not, um, not acquired by them. So by this patronage, they, they start growing in the medieval, medieval, uh, medieval period. They, they shift their capital several times. The, the first capital was probably somewhere near Jaipur, in like southern, southern Bakura, farther south than, than Bishnupur. And then they shift to um, uh, to further to the shift come closer to Bishnupur, and then from the it's actually from the 16th uh, from the, during Akbar's time when Akbar sends Man Singh and Tod uh, Man Singh and followed by Todarmal there, that is when this patronage starts becoming major thing, and that is when all the major temple building starts. And because Bishnupur's main archaeological evidence is temple building, and going by the dates of the temple building, it's from Akbar onwards, for a whole all India context, 16th, 17th century, 16th century onwards, uh, Bishnupur becomes as it is today. It, it really grows. The cultural flourishes happens. Uh, artisans were brought in. Brought in. Um, in fact, the Mughals gave them a right to uh, make cannons, which was not given to everyone. It was they were given a special right to make cannons themselves, so that uh, they could defend uh, the the Bengal territory. Go to Bishnupur and you will see the whole history of the Mallas in stone. Starting with what is considered to be the oldest shrine, the Mirmai temple, which today has a modern looking exterior covering an ancient heart. This is more than 1000 years old. Outside are these spectacular temples spanning a period between 1622 and 1758, a period during which Bishnupur was at its prime. The Ross Mancha, with its deep corridors and enclosed shrine at the centre, is amongst the oldest and less ornate. But as the wealth and clout of the Mallas increased, so did the ornamentation and storytelling. The art on the walls reflected a lot. Bishnupur kings were Vaishnavites. And at, after Chaitanya, uh, Vaishnavism becomes big in Bengal. And again, the Mughals come in here because the Mughals were patronizing Vaishnavism in Bengal because that was the way to reach out to the local elites. So that is when uh, these artisans come in and they, they, uh, they were, these huge temples were commissioned. Uh, the, the terracotta was commissioned according to Vaishnavite um, ideology, the Gaud Gaudiya Vaishnavism ideology. You have Dasavatar, you have Krishna's uh, Rash Chakra. There are as many as 21 temples in Bishnupur and you can see structures like this strewn across in the middle of modern houses. By the beginning of the 18th century, Bishnupur had emerged as an important centre and the temples are just one reflection of it. 
the period saw weavers, masons and artists thronging here. It's normally again from, uh, from the evidence that we have on ground, uh, it, it seems that it's from the again uh, late, mid 16th century onwards when they, their political authority grows, grows as more Bishnupur is growing as a capital, more people were coming in and, and settling there. And then artisans from around the area, so for example, the, uh, the Baluchuri artisans, for example, they were uh, scattered throughout, throughout Bankura. So they were then um, given incentive to come and settle in Bishnupur and turn to like, and Bishnupur uh, king started, and, and the nobles started patronizing the Baluchuri, uh, Baluchuri uh, craft. And it became a major construction, uh, like production center, and became a major trade center. Same thing happened happened for the for for masons, for example, temple construction. It's terracotta um, specialists. So these were all brought in. Terracotta specialists were brought, probably brought in from Nodia, uh, in Krishnanagar, where 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 um, they were very. It's still famous for for clay artisanry. So they brought in from there. They were settled here, given pat patronage. Same uh, similar thing. Uh, similar thing comes up with the Ganjifa, uh, the the Bishnupur uh, Dashavatar Taj. So, so these uh, the specific families were given patronage to produce this card, which were which then only had the local nobles only had access to that, and that is why this is a way of like playing Dashavatar card became a status thing as well, and that is why the knowledge has not passed on as as much because it had a very constricted thing. So this. So, bringing craftsmen and having accessibility to craft and the and the proceeds from the trade, that that became a privilege for the nobles and and and, and the kings and and that is that is how any capital comes uh, comes up. Art and architecture truly came together in these temples, resplendent as they were, with tales from the life of Lord Krishna and everyday life in contemporary Bishnupur. Where else will you be able to see the images of the Ras Leela? and Mughal courtiers on the same panel. Interestingly, archaeologist Tatagat Niyogi believes that this tradition of capturing a contemporary narrative is not unique to Bishnupur or the Baluchari Sari that this capital became so famous for. So the Malas, as most we know, is from what family history they made. So making family histories were also one way you can reach power. So they say that uh, Adi Malla is the first person, uh, first king who came in the 9th and centuries. But then the first king who become king of importance is Bir Hambir. So Bir Hambir is contemporary to, again I said, Man Singh. Man Singh uh, gives him the, the right to rule, hold Vishnupur, the Bengal border for, the, for Akbar. And he was given the right to make and build cannons and like forge cannons and stuff. So he is the... He's the person who brings this court culture to, to him. So by that court culture, I mean it was also a move for legitimacy. So if you bring a Mughal court culture, you could give statuses, like symbolic statuses to people. You could give a mansab, to sub mansab to someone. You bring Mughals, Mughal symbolism and what you're wearing in the court and how you're organizing your court and all that. So you become, you get that legitimacy as well. So, so Bir Hambir is the one who commissions the, the family genealogy and he also brings the Mughal court culture and, and the court ran as a mix of, it, it was an intersection of the Vaishnavite uh, uh, understanding of, of how courts and the state, social statuses, uh, caste system should work. Also a Mughal influence, by that I mean uh, how the court has to be organized as well. So they give patronage to the Brahmins according to the Vaishnavite status. They, but, but they also maintain the, the attire and everything you know, in a Mughal way, they wear Mughal headdress and stuff. So this becomes, uh, becomes big and then this becomes perpetuated. Then in 1740s, from 1739 onwards, I think Marathas invade every year. Marathas is the Bhosles. Bhosles from Nagpur invade every year to collect, um, like to loot and collect taxes. So the Burgis invade and Bishnupur is forefront, this is the ent entry point of Bengal. So they are in charge of prote protecting, uh, preventing the rest of Bengal, but they had, they're constantly fighting with it, uh, with, the, with the Marathas. And this time, the Bengal politics has also changed. Ali Wardi Khan is the is the Nawab. They, it has become an independent Nawabi. Ali Wardi Khan is the Nawab. Ali Wardi Khan is giving them incentive to hold fort against them. But then the Maratha invasion was so harsh and so frequent that the Mallas ultimately lose power. The Purulia Raj family falls first. Gaur Panchakot, their their kingdom is their capital is completely destroyed. Then becomes the towns of the Mallas. They lose power, and then Ali Wardi finally defeats uh, the Maratha leader. Um, 
Bhaskar Pandit in Nadia. And that is in from 14, I think, sorry, sorry, from 1745, 1745, 1746 to 1749, uh, uh, Martha invasion becomes less, less and less. But by that time, the Mullahs had already exhausted themselves. So they, they, are, they are gone. From the scene. It's only Oliver and then Sirajodol and the British were coming in at that time. After the heydays under the Mughals, the Mallas continued to remain aligned to the Nawab of Bengal. The rise of the Marathas and the frequent attacks, however, crippled them in time, and by the 20th century, the Mallas were pretty much wiped out. Today, the temples of Bishnupur are in need of repair. Many of the terracotta panels are damaged and need restoration. Meanwhile, even less remains of the Mallas themselves. Just this, a testimony to their faith and great past, which you must go and see. These temples are truly spectacular. You must travel there. Well, that's a wrap on this week's edition of Tales and Trails. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week. And in the meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.